Vector control for transistor radios. Is that a thing? For a while, I had some small part in our local political apparatus. At these community meetings, I kept hearing about vector control. This or that building or development would be discussed, and someone would always bring up, Hey, what about vector control? Now, I know next to nothing about computer-aided design and drafting, but I had some inkling that vectors were involved in that, and so I sat, bored, in these meetings, trying to guess what vector control was. Was it that people were concerned about the shapes of buildings? They wanted to control the vectors to make sure the building's corners weren't too sharp? Sounds pretty unlikely. Finally, one day, I asked... And, oh, it was not at all what I was thinking. I learned that vector control is just, as I should have known, jargon. A word or expression you use to prove you are in the know and others aren't. It turns out vector control was a euphemism for dealing with rats and mice and their little parasite friends that might be displaced from their little rat homes wherever there is demolition of buildings or grading of land. And so, of course, this looks like little mouse nibbles all along the edges of this radio. Hence the clickbait headline, Vectors Ate My Transistor Radio. Far more likely is some previous owner, some fidgety, nervous little person, picked the edges of this one all around. Gee, thanks. Still, other than that, it's a great-looking radio. I'm sure you agree. The resemblance to the six-transistor candle and universal radios can't be denied. Here's the candle PTR-62B, so you can see what I mean. The six-transistor universals shared that same look and that same PTR-62B model number. These radios seem a little less difficult to find than most transistor radios, so they must have sold a lot of them. There were also candle-branded two-transistor versions that looked exactly like this Lloyd's and shared the TR2 model number. Here are a couple of those. This one, as we can see, suffered the same fate as the Lloyd's radio. Could this then be considered a design flaw? Well now, I thought about this. Is the radio maker to be blamed for making a thin edge on a radio that people just can't help from picking at? That might constitute a design flaw, sort of akin to the legal concept of attractive nuisance. Your Honor, I'm sorry I stole his car. I couldn't help it. He left the keys in it. Or is this, as the psychologists would say, a self-control issue? And is there any such thing anymore as self-control? Is there a design flaw inherent in a hot fudge sundae because I just can't help eating it? I think so. It is not my fault. All of these uniquely shaped radios we've been looking at are from the same maker, who we will call Tokyo Transistor Industry, because that is their name. Their shirt pocket radios had a different look than all the rest. There was a kind of round equality to them that almost made them look as if they were designed in the 1940s. There's a Toshiba radio like that, too, the Toshiba ATP90 looks similarly out of step with the times and out of step with all their other models. My guess is that this Toshiba and these candle designs were designed by people who wished in the late 50s that it still was the 1940s. That doesn't necessarily mean these designers were, as I've been called, stuck in the past. They were good designers, no doubt, and as good designers ought to be. They were well-grounded in design history. So they were appreciating styles of the 40s and applying them to the 50s. Nostalgia for the past is nothing new among designers, or the general public for that matter, though, curiously, each generation thinks it invented the idea. This Lloyd's Electra is trimmed out with a nice metal and cloisonné badge on the front and features the ever-popular flying V shape near the dials that was so popular in mid-century design. Very few two-transistor radios have such upscale features as a screw on back and the mesh that covers the inside of the ventilation slots on the back. 
This makes the radio tropicalized. As they used to say, the mesh was intended to keep the bugs out of your radio when you were in the tropics. Again with the bugs! More vectors! There's plenty of room inside here for more than two transistors, and indeed the same cabinet may well have been used for other more well-endowed radios, branded Lloyd's or Candle or something else. I've seen this with some of the other makers of two-transistor radios. Not very often, though. It's a two-transistor with speaker, and a well-made little radio, that's for sure. And it's heavy. This thing is built solid and sturdy. Could have used a little more vector control, though, or perhaps a little more owner self-control, if there is such a thing anymore.